Okay, let's talk about the elbow joint, specifically the structure of the elbow joint in action. So our objective is to identify the components and movements of the elbow joint and describe the ligaments that support the elbow joint. Okay, so here we've got uh, the elbow joint from a lateral view in the top right and an anterior view from the bottom right. So the top right is uh, showing the hinge joint with flexion and extension. The bottom picture shows the pivot motion of the elbow in pronation and supination. Let's take these individually. First, this hinge joint. So there we got a lateral view of the uh, elbow on the right side. And we break that apart a bit and we see the following. The structure on the distal humerus called the trochlea, which means pulley. It's appropriate for this joint. Then the trochlear notch and the ulna there in orange. And those two are articulate together. Before we go on, let's just take a look at this trochlear notch. I removed the radius. And there we've got the olecranon process on one end. That's the bony part you kneel, you put your elbow on the table. And then there's the coronoid process of the front part. And the trochlear notch is between those two structures. So trochlea and trochlear notch, we put these together. And that's what makes the elbow joint. And this is what makes uh, flexion and extension possible in this plane. Extension, flexion. Extension, straightening the elbow. Flexion, bending the elbow. All right, so now let's look at this hinge joint, this anterior view from the right side, and break it apart. And let's look at these structures from just a different point of view. The trochlea, which is outlined in purple there the distal humerus, and then the trochlear notch in orange, so that's the part that articulates. There's the ulna side. Now on the radial side, we have the capitulum in turquoise. There we got capitulum because it's round like a head, caput for head. And then the radial head, which is the top of that part, will then articulate with the capitulum. So trochlea and trochlear notch, capitulum and radial head in that fashion. And there we have the hinge joint. Now what about the pivot joint? Let's look at this a little bit more closely, and there's a radius and R in green, and the ulna uh, as well, radius and ulna. So the radial head that we see right there is circular, like a wheel. That's going to articulate there in um, this radial notch on the ulna that the orange arrow shows. Now the ulnar head, which is more distal, is this round portion there, is going to articulate with the ulnar notch on the radius there. So we put these two together, and this is what enables that pivot motion of pronation and supination. So we have pronation and supination. Pronation, radius crosses over the ulna. Supination, the two bones are parallel to each other, like railroad tracks. Let's see this and superimposed on the human body. There's our supine position. Another way of remembering that is you think that, oh, you can hold a bowl of soup like this when your hand is facing forward. But if you do this motion, you're more prone to spill the soup. So that's pronation, moving from the supine position, you're holding a bowl of soup, and if you do pronation into the prone position, you're more likely to spill the soup. Sup supine position, pronation results in the prone position, supination results in the supine position. Cool. All right, now that we've done those actions, let's talk about the elbow joint and its ligaments. And so there's the joint capsule, the collateral ligaments, and the annular ligament. So our joint capsule, remember that all the bones, including the humerus, is surrounded by this periosteum, this dense collagenous connective tissue. And as it approaches the distal bone, the dense collagenous connective tissue changes name. It's the same tissue, but instead of periosteum, it now wraps itself around the synovial joint. We call it the joint capsule. And then it continues as periosteum down the radius and the ulna. So this joint capsule is this dense collagenous connective tissue. It surrounds the joint, lined with synovial fluid, membrane in the middle with synovial fluid. This creates a pocket of fluid and gives some negative pressure to help keep the bones together. Now, parts of this... Uh, uh, ligament, uh, this capsular ligament, we have the radial collateral or the lateral collateral ligament of the elbow. But radial collateral because it attaches between the radius and the humerus. Now, when you then put medial force, also known as varus force, on the elbow, pushing right by that medial epicondyle of the humerus, notice that that radial collateral ligament prevents too much motion in that uh, plane. Now, we look at the ulnar collateral ligament that courses between the ulna and that medial epicondyle of the humerus, a lateral or valgus force that will then cause this ulnar collateral ligament to become tight and it helps prevent too much movement in that fashion or plane. 
Then our annular ligament, annular for ring, and it gets its name because it forms a ring of connective tissue right around the wheel or head of the radius, so that when the radial head is pronating or supinating, it helps keep the radial head intact. All right, so we've now just covered the actions and structure of the elbow joint and the ligaments of the elbow joint.